In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pause for a moment as we look back on our lives and prepare to make our confession. We say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow me. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, Creator of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image. And in these last days you have spoken to us, in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. Our Old Testament reading is from Genesis 22, verses 1 through 14. Some years later, God decided to test Abraham, so he spoke to him. Abraham answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said, Go get Isaac, your only son, the one you dearly love. Take him to the land of Moriah, and I will show you a mountain where you must sacrifice him to me on the fires of an altar. So Abraham got up early the next morning and chopped wood for the fire. He put a saddle on his donkey and left with Isaac and two servants for the place where God had told him to go. Three days later, Abraham looked off in the distance and saw the place. He told his servants, stay here with the donkey while my son and I go over there to worship. We will come back. Abraham put the wood on Isaac's shoulder, but he carried the hot coals and, his, and the knife. As the two of them went walking along, Isaac said, Father, we have the coals and the wood, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? My son, Abraham answered, God will provide the lamb. The two of them walked on, and when they reached the place that God had told him about, Abraham built an altar and placed the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son and put him on the wood. He then took the knife and got ready to kill his son. But the Lord's angel shouted from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Don't hurt the boy or harm him in any way, the angel said. Now I know that you you truly obey God because you were willing to offer him your only son. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in the bushes. So he took the ram and sacrificed it in place of his son. Abraham named that place, the Lord will provide. And even now people say, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm today is Psalm 13, a prayer for the Lord's help. How much longer, Lord, will you forget about me? Will it be forever? How long will you hide? 
How long must I be confused and miserable all day? How long will my enemies keep beating me down? Please listen, Lord God, and answer my prayers. Make my eyes sparkle again, or else I will fall into a sleep of death. My enemies will say, now we've won. They will be greatly pleased when I am defeated. I trust your love, and I feel like celebrating because you rescued me. You have been good to me, Lord, and I will sing about you. Our gospel reading for today comes from Matthew 10, verses 40 through 42, and this is Jesus speaking. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me also welcomes the one who sent me. Anyone who welcomes a prophet, just because that person is a prophet, will be given the same reward as a prophet. Anyone who welcomes a good person, just because that person is good, will be given the same reward as a good person. And anyone who gives one of my most humble followers a cup of cold water, just because that person is a follower, will surely be rewarded. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Canticle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Hello, everyone. Well, our readings for today um, can be quite a challenge, and um, particularly Genesis 22. And so that, that's where I've chosen to start today. In our minds, Genesis 22 and the story of Abraham is very troubling. How could God ask Abraham to do such an awful thing as to sacrifice his own son? We have to understand that over the course of Abraham's life, as told to us in the Bible, he is slowly learning who God is. This is important because this God will be the one and only God of the people of Israel. And Abraham will have to teach his son, who will teach his sons, who will teach their children to this very day. Abraham lives in a world where there are many gods. He was very familiar with them, but they also were very different from the Lord God. Many times in the story of Abraham's life, he has been given a promise. He will have an heir. Through that heir will come many descendants who will become a people, a nation, through whom many nations will be blessed. Abraham has believed God and has experienced the power of a God who can bring his words to pass. Time has passed since the miracle of Isaac's birth. We don't know exa exactly how old Isaac is at the time of this story. He is still a child, and at this time, Abraham faces the test of his life. God says to him, take Isaac, your son, your only son, the one whom you love, to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering. 
In ancient Near East worship, animal and child sacrifices were a regular part of the worship for many of the gods. So this idea would not have been at all strange to Abraham, although uh, it still would be a terrifying demand. Yet, when he was old, and Sarah was too old to have children, God had given them Isaac. And Hebrews 11 in the New Testament tells us that Abraham considered that God could bring someone back from the dead. So in some ways, it's not a surprise that he believed in God's word of promise and he obeyed. That doesn't mean it was easy. This is a difficult reading, but it gets worse. When Abraham prepares his son on the altar and lifts the knife to kill him, at the last moment, an angel stops him. There appears a ram for the sacrifice. And God says, now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. The promise made to Abraham is renewed. This story about Abraham is a story about faith and trust in God. Abraham had experienced the goodness and faithfulness of God. He trusted and believed so much in God that he was willing to sacrifice to God what was the most important thing in his life. That is devotion and a level of obedience that most of us can't imagine. But it was because he had experienced God's goodness and the reality of God's presence with him. He knew that everything he had, including his son, was because of God. How many of us live with that reality? But the story also tells us about God. The name of the place is significant. Moriah means foreseen of Jehovah. When Isaac asks where the animal for the sacrifice is, Abraham replies, God himself will see. Our translations say provide, but the Hebrew word is see. The meaning is that God has already foreseen, gone before, and will settle things. God has already gone ahead of Abraham and prepared what Abraham would need to respond to, to God's command. The story also foreshadows God the Father's sacrifice of his son his only son, whom he loved. God was willing to sacrifice his only son, Jesus, whom he loved because he loved us. And Jesus was willing to let himself be killed just for us. Though Jesus rose from the dead, the suffering to get to the resurrection was real. Both father and son went through it out of love for us. But what, what does the story of Abraham have to tell us for today, along with the scripture that we read in Romans and our gospel reading? The God of Abraham remains faithful, true, good, and loving. God didn't just throw the test at Abraham and hope he passed. Over the years, as told in Genesis, Abraham was learning who God was, that he was real and powerful, good and faithful, but also that he was worthy of and required obedience. For the Jews historically, and even today, this story is about being obedient to God's word and living a path of obedience. I don't think, unfortunately, that many Christians think that way. Paul's words in Romans seem very strange to most of us today, as do Jesus's words about a prophet. A prophet is a revealer of God's truth. The prophet has a special gift of seeing things as God sees them 
And that person, a man or woman, reveals the truth to others. Jesus was God, but also prophet and priest. He came to tell us what God is like, what he does, and how we need to live. I've often heard it said that we lack wisdom today. Our leaders do, but so do we. We could learn a lot by reading the wisdom found in the scriptures. I'm going to read you just a few things from the Bible about how to live wise words. It is going to sound like a bunch of don'ts for some people. And some people may even think that's legalistic. But I want you to think instead about how they might be a reflection of love. The Bible tells us, love God and love your neighbors. If you live, if you live these words in love, then they are not so hard. It softens their expression. So the Bible tells us things like, it's important to know there is a God. We should not entertain thoughts of other gods besides him. The Bible tells us to love God, to respect and revere him. It tells us to listen to a prophet speaking in God's name. It tells us to emulate God's ways. It tells us to hang out with those who know him, to love other believers, to reprove wrongdoers, not to embarrass others, not to oppress the weak, not to gossip about others, not to take revenge, not to bear a grudge, to learn the wisdom of the word of God and to teach it to others. The Bible is full of words of wisdom. What if we had faith like Abraham and a love like Jesus? What would our community look like? What would the church look like? It is not enough to say we are Christians and then look like the devil all week long. To be a believer means that we learn how to live the truth of God's word and follow in our master's footsteps, even if it takes us to the cross. We are not Christians because we go to church or because we live in a certain nation with laws based on Judeo-Christian principles. Being a Christian is a way of life based on faith, belief, and trust in the one true God and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. Amen. We say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made known. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now Gwen Dixon from Clandestilio is going to do our intercessions for us. Thank you, Gwen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have given us your only son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin, an example of godly life. Give us the grace to thankfully receive this wonderful gift. Lord, in your mercy. We especially pray for our Bishop Gregory, Archdeacon Barry, Mission Leader Steve, and the Vicars Alexis and Caroline, giving thanks for the work they do for us, especially in these worrying times. We give thanks too for all the other clergy who live amongst us or regularly visit and bring a refreshing diversity to our worship. We pray for your blessing upon this congregation, upon our churches and upon our mission area and for your presence to be seen in what we do and say each day. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for people and parts of the world where life is precarious, whether through disaster, poverty, disease, war, or the pandemic. We earnestly pray for peace on earth, goodwill between all people, and a cure for COVID-19. We pray for your, our world. Help us to be good stewards so that we can pass on your wonderful creation in good order to the generations yet to come. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our friends and families and our Christian community that united by our common baptism, we may always welcome the newcomer, the stranger, and all who are vulnerable. Help us to follow Jesus' words and advice on hospitality and generous giving, and realize accepting someone's help is as good as giving someone help. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit and for those who care for them. We pray for the sick, for those who mourn, for those without faith, hope, or love. We remember before you those who have died and those bereaved by their passing. We give back to you, Lord, those whom you gave us. Your son taught us that life is eternal and that love cannot die. So death is only an horizon and an horizon is only the limit of our sight. Open our eyes to see more clearly and draw us closer to you so that we may know we are nearer to our loved ones who are with you. In our hearts, Lord, we hold the names of those dear to us who are in need of your help. And now in a moment of silence, we bring them before you. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, in the week ahead that lies before us, may we reflect your love in our families, our church and our community. And in doing so, show everyone we meet that we are followers of Christ. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power power and and the the glory, glory for ever ever and ever. ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.